In this problem, we have an 80 pound crate supported by a ring at point O, and the ring is connected to three cables, OA, OB, and OC. These three cables all start from point O, and the coordinates of their endpoints, A, B, C, are given. And we need to determine the tension force developed in each of the cable, each of the rope, if the system is in equilibrium. So we start with free body diagram of the ring at O. So it is connected to the crate, therefore this tension force simply equals to the weight of the crate, 80 pound. And then we have tension force TA developed in rope OA, tension force TB, and lastly, tension force TC. That completes the free body diagram. The directions of TA, TB, TC are all given indirectly. So the only unknowns are the magnitudes TA, TB, TC. And this is the three-dimensional particle equilibrium problem. Therefore, we can write three scalar equations and we can solve for all three of our unknowns. So we need to represent our forces in Cartesian vector forms so that we can easily tell what their x, y, z components are. To do that, let's use TA as an example. TA equals to its magnitude, which is unknown, times the unit vector from O to A that gives us direction. The unit vector UOA can be determined from the position vector ROA because ROA and UOA and TA all have the same direction. Therefore, that is ROA divided by its magnitude. And ROA can be determined by the coordinates of its start and end points. The start point is simply 0, 0, 0. That's the origin. Therefore, ROA equals to from the coordinates of point A, negative 4i plus 3j plus 5k divided by the magnitudes negative 4 squared plus 3 squared plus 5 squared. And this equals to negative 4 over square root of 50 times TAi plus 3 over square root of 50 times TAj plus 5 over square root of 50 times TAk in the unit of pound. So I'm keeping these instead of evaluating them uh, because this is simply an intermediate step. So using the same method, we can determine Tb as a Cartesian vector, and that is negative 4 over square root of 50 Tbi minus 3 So you can tell that there's a symmetry between TA and TB. The only thing that's different in their directions is this plus and minus sign here. And lastly, TC can be determined using the same method from the position vector OC, and that is 7 over square root of 74 TCI plus 5 over square root of 74 TCJ, sorry, K. There's no Y component for TC pound. And don't forget the, this force right here, W equals to negative 80 K pound. So now all the forces are represented in Cartesian vector forms. And the next thing to do is to write our equilibrium equations according to Newton's first law for x, y, z directions, respectively. So resultant force along the x direction equals to, we only summarize the force components along the x direction with the unit vector i. So this one, this one, and this one. Therefore, that's negative 4 over square root of 50 Ta plus, sorry, minus, 4 over square root of 50 
TB plus 7 over square root of 74 TC. And that equals to 0. Resultant force along the y direction, only adding the y components with the unit vector j. This one and this one. And that's the only two. Those are the only two. So 3 over square root of 50 TA minus 3 over square root of 50 TB equals to 0. And lastly, for the resultant force along the z direction, adding the ones along the z direction with the unit vector k. So we have 5 over square root of 50 ta plus 5 over square root of 50 tb plus 5 over square root of 74 tc minus 80 equals to 0. So now those are our three equilibrium equations. We have three scalar unknowns, TA, TB, TC. We can solve for all three of them. I'll probably start with equation number two, So, because from here you can easily tell that TA equals to TB. That helps you reduce an unknown. So now you can use equation one and three. So that's two equations with only two unknowns, and then you can solve for your unknowns. So as a result, TA equals to 36.0 pound. TB is the same as TA, which is also 36.0 pound. And then lastly, TC equals to 50 pound.